there somebody down there? What? Nobody doing the camera? What? Well, we're going to wait until... Is this anything? Okay. What about the other headset? Can you do the sound check? Test one, two, test one, two. Okay. How we sound? All right. And I'm introducing you as Ryan Conwell from Lax All Stars. Yes? Welcome to Onondaga Nation Fieldhouse in Nedro, New York. I'm Chuck Jaffe, and we are here at the LAS NAI Lacrosse All-Stars North American Invitational for one of the late games here on opening night. I'm joined by Ryan Conwell from LAX All-Stars. He will be my color guy. And our game tonight, the Aquasani, the big boys of Aquasasni, who just scored right off the bat on a quick goal from Desi Oaks. And it's, it's the big boys of Aquasasni playing Graftex. Ryan, you've been here all day. We're late in the evening. And, and teams are still sorting it out. And we're still in that round where everybody's got to get sorted. We'd sort of expect, although both of these teams come in one nothing, that the big boys maybe have a little bit of the advantage, don't they? Yeah, I'd say definitely. Um, Graftex is bringing a pretty experienced squad. Uh, they have a lot of guys with NLL experience, a lot of, you know, in-depth box experience. So they're going to be able to put up a great fight. Um, but, you know, Aqua they're, they're uh they're bringing a team that has the potential to make it very far in this tournament. So Graftex comes away with the possession. Kyle Killen shot goes wide and into the netting. That will give the ball over to the big boys. Big boys in the gray with the black shoulders. And just to make things confusing, Graftex is in white with black shoulders. Fed back out. Now in front, the little twister there gets a fresh shot clock. But Patrick Hannigan from Graftex can't come away with it. Ball goes over to the big boys. Shot directly into the chest of the Graftex goalie. And now it's brought up the floor by Trevor Smith. So they get their change to get the offense out. A little calmer defense that time. Aquasasni with good looks, but not good shots. Driven wide, low angle shot, easy stop. Scooped away by the big boys. They go into transition. So we are playing 15 minute halves. And again, we are still in the opening sort of early round play. Things will get sorted out, and we expect we'll see more even games. Aquasasti won its first game by a score of 15 to 1. Got a penalty coming up. Still no possession. And a slow whistle as the big boys came away with the ball. And I'd like to see Graftax actually come away with a goal on this man up because I feel that if they're going to have a really good chance at coming away with a win here, um, capitalizing on their transition opportunities, which they've definitely been pushing for, would, uh, would be a great step in that direction, as well as being able to take advantage of their man up opportunities like this. They're not going to get many. So Jordan Cree in that shot wide, winds up hitting the ceiling. Because it hits the ceiling, it hits an obstruction, it turns the ball over to the big boys. It is a little confusing because the big boys are shooting on a goalie who is wearing a shirt that looks like, I'm sorry, the, the Graftex team shooting on a goalie who's wearing a shirt that looks like it could be a Graftex jersey. Increase violation there by the big boys. Gives the ball back to Graftex. Brad Gillies with it. 
familiar Rochester Nighthawks helmet. Plays a little catch with Kyle Killeen. Gillies with it again. Shoots that, stopped comfortably. Killeen comes up with the ball, shoots that wide. Possession goes over to the big boys. And they say he used his free hand to get away from that check. So the ball goes back to Graftex. Stop there in front on that shot. It was Aiden Milburn who took the shot. That's Jeff Shatler with the ball. So most of the big boys are actually young players with then a couple of guys very experienced. Shatler, of course, being one of them. Shatler, who plays for the NLL champion Saskatchewan Rush. Breakaway here. Shot high by Braden Wallace. Reverse transitions the other way. Shatler just kind of loops the pass over. Sky Sunday with the ball. Sunday pressed by Pat Hannigan. Fed across, stolen there. It's Trevor Smith, and he clangs it off the post. And then the ball goes out of bounds, but because it hit the post, it's the same as touching the goalie. And that means it stays with Graftex. And that was a pretty lucky bounce for Graftex too, because they're not getting a lot of those second chance looks against this team. In the possession before that, the rebound winds up going all the way out to midfield, and Shatler was able to set up that look going the other way. Nice stop there. Edmund Cathers, the big boys goalie. So they go back on the attack. Dalton Day with it, kicks that back. Blake Kenny, playing two-man game, Kenny and Day. Kicks it over on the right-hand side. Fed in front, shot wide there by James Cathers. Shot clock running down, three left, fed across. Gillies picked it up. He might have wanted to let that clock expire, but it works out for them. Graftex in front, stopped by Cathers there. Tried to go five hole on the break. Here's a break the other way, reverse transition, stopped. So I believe that's Davy Jones. For a little bit of a disadvantage on some of the goalie things where they're just simply listed on rosters as G's. No numbers to help us. Loose ball there, picked up by Braden Wallace. Yeah, Davey's doing a great job in net for them so far. Um, hey, he's a big reason why they're able to stay in this game. Graftex lucky to come up with that big hit there by Chad George. George did a nice job staying in good position. The shot from Aiden Milburn gets stopped again. Milburn a little feeling a little snake bit. Shatler being checked by Milburn. Shot clock, or, or time violation, timeline violation. Ooh, Shatler lucky not to be called there. Yeah, that was, uh, I would have been he, agreeing he, with that call if they made that one. He rolled it away, but you know, so I have not been here for very long. This is actually the second game I've seen today. But the interesting thing was in the first game that, was, that I was watching, that was the call that I hadn't seen. Now that shot there by, by Eddie Chiesa, that was dumb that Chiesa went behind his back. He should have been going straight on that one. He had a better angle going normal than flipping it around his back. Lucky that Graftex comes away with it, but now they don't as the possession ends, and they really not able to test Cathers on that one. Pretty much shot everything high. Yeah, Eddie's one of the few guys. He played really well at RIT for them, but he's a local Jamesville, Jamesville DeWitt product. Um, not a lot of box experience there, but I think he was just sort of having a little bit of fun trying to go for a nice inside finish on that. You know, it's a one to nothing game. Put the ball in the, in the net and worry about, worry about the, the glory later. And it's funny that I say that because, so I'm old enough, and we have a delay of game coming, too many men on the big boys. So we'll wind up with them bringing, I'm old enough to know that, you know, and, and you're not quite as old, Ryan, but there was a point where when guys would go behind the back or what have you, they were considered hot dogs. And then with the evolution of the game and the Gate Brothers and whatever else, we wound up getting to where, hey, you weren't a hot dog. It was necessary. But we now get to where just because you can do it 
doesn't mean you should. If you use it when you're supposed to, it's fine. If you use it when you're not supposed to, it's a hot dog again. Yeah, and a lot of guys, when they start picking up box for the first time, that becomes a, a license to start doing some of that one-handed, behind the back, around the world type things. Um, you know, is not all always knowing the situation. Cathers is all over it, stopped Gillies. Ball wound up going back to Cathers, but it went off of a Graftex player. And I, I was giving credit to Davy Jones earlier, but like you were saying, Cathers is all over these shots coming from Graftex right now. So 20 seconds remaining. Patrick Hannigan, he's also an RIT product. Now plays his box lacrosse in Boston. What team does he play for, by plays the way? Plays for the Minutemen. Plays for the Minutemen. As, as I might add to you. <laughs> Yeah, he's Picked been a great player for us, and I know he, he loves the box game. He's thrilled to be out here uh, playing against some of the competition like this. He's and relishing it. Right now he's pretty happy that Chad Levick grabbed that loose ball and stuck it. So finally, Graftex gets one by Cathers, and we're knotted at one with five minutes remaining in the first quarter, first half, I should say. Yeah, and Levick's one of those guys. He was a pair of uh, attackmen down at RIT with Ryan Lee. They were prolific in their time there. He's gotten a little bit of attention in the NLL, so it'll be interesting if uh, he makes a roster this year after the expansion. Damon Curry comes away with the loose ball, gets it over to Kyle Killen. So Graftex, which trailed from basically the first second, and now they're gonna get another man advantage. It's the big boys who are actually younger players, mostly from Aquasasten. And there's Kiesa there. He, Sort of not moving at box speed, and now he's playing without a stick. That's going to end it anyway. So we got a slash coming against. We'll have to see who's being sent to the box, but it is against the big boys. I believe it's against Cree. No, I'm wrong. I thought they were sending one guy to the box, and instead, a different player, Mike Shea. Last time I saw Mike Shea playing here, he was playing for Team Ireland in this building. There's actually several players here that I know are looking to make the trip out to Dublin next week is when um, Ireland's holding their national team tryout. So uh, maybe he's one of those hopefuls getting in the last couple of runs in to uh, make an impression on coaches. Well, you don't make the impression when you get into the box. Nice save by Cathers there. Ball stays. In this end, it's Milburn with the ball now. Milburn to Gillies, to Killen. On the other side, you get Levick, who scored the goal. Killen tries to feed that down. Ball scooped up nicely there by Tyler Armstrong. Take it away by Braden Wallace. And they say that too many men on the floor for Graftex. Gillies is arguing that there weren't too many men, but he's not going to win that argument. And I was going to compliment their awareness for being able to take advantage of coming out the back door fast enough to break that up, but um, I think it was a little bit too fast. Yeah, that's the, the call. So we still have Mike Shea in for and now released, so it is an extra man play for the big boys. Still waiting to see the time being served on the clock. A oh, nice pick up there by Gillies. Gillies coming in alone. And he scores. Brad Gillies gets his first of the game, in the gra and Graftex has its first lead. It's a shorthander with two minutes remaining in the first that makes it two to one. And remember, I said, I, I thought on paper big boys would be favored. They blew out the Rochester Bats 15 to one. Graftex played a much tougher team. They played the Syracuse Stingers, but, and they came away with a good win. Still, I think most people on paper would have expected the team featuring Jeff Shatler leading a bunch of young, hungry guys. Yeah, and right before Cathers that play again. happened, I was looking at Jeff Shatler running the point and thinking about how, how valuable it is to have a player like Shatler running your man up offense in a tournament like this, but 
Uh, Brad Gilly showed how important it is to uh, have a guy up top of your man up to to take advantage of those chances when they show up. Well, and the interesting thing is Brad Gillies has been running out the front door in this game, but when they go man down, he plays at the back door. You're looking for too many men call. They were hoping for a too many men call. Didn't get it. Saved by Cathers. Tyler Smith. Do I want to call Smythe because he spells it with a Y, but there's no E at the end. So, Tyler, if your family's watching and I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I apologize. That's Levick with the ball. It's too bad they didn't make that pass because they were wide open on that lefty side for a nice shot if they had connected there. Four on the shot clock. Ashmore couldn't handle it. Big boys let the clock expire. A little surprise they're not trying to take a timeout. 20 seconds remaining, so shot clock no longer at issue. Can't get the shot over the top, but the ball gets kicked out to Shatler, and he scores. So the acknowledged pros are the guys who are getting the second goals for each team. Jeff Shatler's score evens things up, and the clock keeps running in this games here at LASNAI. So it gets us to halftime with our score Two to two, a very entertaining first half. Ryan, we'll come back in just a moment. We've got a short break for the halftime. We'll be back and we'll set up the second half and more when we come back after a short break. You're watching the Lacrosse All-Stars North American Invitational. Stay tuned. Welcome back to second half action. We're tied at two. And both teams have changed goalies. So Graftex wins the draw. Can't control it. The new goalie cannot corral it, but now he does. We do not even have him on our roster. Or if we do, we don't know his name. So. And we believe that it's, well, I'm thinking this is Davy Jones and we were watching Denzel Weeks and if so, I apologize. But I think we're gonna make the assumption that this is Davy Jones rather than no, or? That was Davy. Oh, okay, it was Davy in the first half. So it's Denzel Weeks in the cage. We apologize for the confusion. Remember that teams were setting their rosters earlier in the day, These things are still being sorted out. And again, here's Gillies who's playing a lot of back end, wisely just lets that ball go. And the one player for Graftex that's been very quiet so far that I expect to see more out of is um, Matt Hosick. So another rush player, kind of like Shatler. Um, he's still pretty young in the league, but um, you might also know him as his older brother, Graham Hosick. Um, it would be quite an addition if they had him on this team, but Matt is by himself still a fantastic player, but he's been pretty quiet so far today. So we got a penalty coming. We have a penalty coming. I, I think they're saying that Denzel Weeks was able to get possession, and they're not just going to call it a push, but we won't know until they stop the play. Meanwhile, Weeks comes to the cage. 
Shot clock expired. Oh, they're letting it run. So the shot clock was triggered. Just as we've had problems with names, they're having issues maybe getting the shot clock ready. So they did reset it. So it has continued. Long possession, fed in front. Killen can't get that one by. So they did call interference with the goalie, which means he had to have possession. And it wasn't just a push as he came out. He had to be grounded one foot in the goal circle and then have possession of the ball. So they ruled that he had it. So it's another man advantage for Graftex. Yeah, and it's really been impressive how many penalties have been happening so far. With the shortened time periods, you tend to have only one or two penalties a game. That's what we've been seeing so far today, but um, Akwesasne is giving Graftex a lot of chances right now. And penalty time, we should point out, is a minute, minute of running time. So basically, most of these penalties will be one minute. That one stopped there. Nice save. Levick, who scored the first goal for Graftex, can't get that one, but Aaron Pass gives the ball back. Little transition, here's Chiesa again. And we're gonna have too many men coming on Graftex as they mess up that substitution. Worse, the longer that it takes for Graft Graftex wants to get out and be ready to go because the longer it takes, the better this advantage is because basically this is killing the rest of the penalty time for the big boys. And so that's actually the second illegal substitution that we've had on Graftex so far. And both of them have come in pretty critical chances too. I mean, this one, this one's on offense. They had a three on two developing that they weren't able to take advantage of. The other one was hopping out on defense, trying to slow them down there. Well, and so that, that delay waiting for things to happen is what gives big boys the advantage and a score. A little nice cross crease move. It was an errant ball, but then Desi Oaks Desi Oaks scoops it up, goes immediately for the far post, and makes it three to two. And now you'll see um, Graftex definitely taking their time. I think they learned their lesson there. Not a big rush to get out to the faceoff circle. Well, of course, the penalty releases. But again, here's the things that you don't know. And, and you know, you and I are used to watching games at very high levels, but also games at lower levels. You know, some of the things that we're looking at. You know, I've got players on the roster that we haven't seen. They're not even in the game sheets. That one shot off the goalie. Big boys thought they were getting the ball and tried to run things down, but they're not going to. Graftex will reset, trailing by one now. That's Kiesa with the ball. Tries to dunk it. Can't get it over the shoulder. I saw he gave his teammates a little shrug on the side of, hey, I figured I'd try it. I don't think he'll try it a second time, though. Well, it's not a bad idea to try it. It's just, this is a very close game. You think about, you know, you can't waste possessions in a short game that's tight like this. Fed across, Gillies shoots that wide. Loose ball gets in front. Braden Wallace with the ball. Kicks that up high. Bo Riley. Bo Riley's father, Brent, is the Graftex, is, is the guy who created Graftex. Oh, really? We are old friends. Brent Riley, who played his collegiate ball, I believe, at RIT. That's why there's a lot of RIT alums and everything else. And Graftex back in the 1980s, and I don't want to date myself, nobody did lacrosse t-shirts like Graftex. Everyone has spent the last decades trying to get caught up to what Brent Riley and his team would do. And I ran a club in Florida, and that's where we got everything that we did back in the day. And Graftex is a team that's been a fixture at Lake Placid for years now too. So, you know, Graftex is truly synonymous with pretty high level lacrosse. They don't just show up to a tournament and, uh, you know, just try to have fun. They're looking to win some serious games. Two on one going the other way. Gillies shot went wide, but Gillies forces 
the ball and make sure that they can't get it over to Shatler. Loose ball kicking around, picked up. Corey Ashmore with it, feeds that in front. Had the wrong guy coming off the bench as they had a lefty. Again, a lefty who is not on our roster, so we don't know who that was, number 24. But he has the ball now, and he scores. You know, I've been really impressed by Aquasuzny, especially in a man down situation like that, where they're able to really slow down Graftox in transition and force them into a settled situation. Whenever they have a guy, even in the middle of the field uh, with the ball, they're still able to force him to bounce it outside, wait for the numbers to settle up. And once they're in a settled situation, they're typically playing pretty tough defense and not giving good opportunities. Well, we're now tied. But the truth is, that goal, the key to that goal was Brad Gilley's play stopping the fast break and the, the Aquasasti big boys' decision to shoot it anyway. Absolutely. Because if they had held it, as Shatler's shot gets stopped, if they had held it and that ball's scooped up, there's the other player who was on the bench now that wasn't there at the beginning of the game. He's number one. We have no idea who he is. That one shot from the outside, scooped up, looking ahead. So when they took the quick shot, they gave the ball back while they were man down. They could have run off virtually the entire man down. Loose ball scooped up there, fed ahead. Killen can't handle the pass as it was errant from Eli Salama. Now the ball goes over to the big boys. Mike Shea with the ball. He's gonna dish it off and head to the bench as they get the full substitutions on. Shatler with it now. And that's the other thing that people should expect is that some of these teams will add or will have some more players as we get away from Thursday. We get to Friday and Saturday. So some of these teams, are they're trying to stay in the mix and in the hunt right now, knowing that the roster you see them with at this moment may be different. I mean, rosters are changing literally at this point mid-game when a guy shows up. Right, and I think it's important to point that out because players – in this tournament, you're talking Thursday games, Friday games, and Saturday. Not everyone can get those days off of work necessarily, depending on what other commitments they have going on. And there are players that are on these rosters but just aren't dressing yet. So some of these teams are showing up a little shorthanded, just trying to make it through that first day when they're getting some pretty serious reinforcements. Levick gets his own rebound, but he needs to put that ball down. Oh, we've got another penalty. And I can hear some uh, some coaching coming from the Aquasuzny bench where they're really trying to pay attention to the clock right now. I think the running clock is weighing a little bit heavy on them and it's high game. They don't want to wind up in a situation where they're down and they don't have the time to make the plays to come back. Hak Degaro is in the box. Gilly shot. Rings the goalie in the face mask. Gillies gets it back, feeds it in front. Shot wide by Killen. Levick picks it up. 17 left on the shot clock. Gillies shoots that wide. And that will pretty much do it for the man up because they've got a full 30 second shot clock and of course the penalty time is running now so the longer they can take to get there and wait for the whistle but they killed off another 13 seconds so 17 seconds in the penalty Shatler and it's no surprise whose stick it winds up in with Jeff Shatler going over to pick up that ball right away splits the double team and he knows, he knows what's coming. He knows that we're getting the guy out, the, out of the box, which happens now. They, they barely get a man up. And then Gillies comes away with the loose ball. Across, wide. Oh, and a lucky bounce as the guy comes out of the box to pick it up. Nice save. Shea was the guy who was late getting back to the defensive zone which made him Johnny on the spot offensively, but he couldn't convert that because he is a defensive player after all. Not the best he could do. Shatler gets stripped there. Running the break the other way. 
Now they slow it down. Yeah, I think you're getting the point of the game where you're really going to start valuing these possessions, especially in a running time game. Three minutes isn't really three minutes. Now, Ryan, you've been here. Are we playing overtime if this game ends in a tie? Uh, typically, we do go into overtime. It's a pretty fast one um, because, especially with the bracket style format, you know, ties cannot progress. You know, we need to have a winner. I should know, should have known the answer to that question, but. I've been driving most of the day. <laughs> no, it's a good question. It's something that doesn't come have up too much. Coming here. Yeah, that stick and went right on top of the helmet. There's no question about that one. Uh, I would say there's tons of question about that one. I would say these are big boys. Why are you not letting them play? That, that there was no advantage gained. It was a tap on the top of the head. It wasn't a slash <laughs> to the top of the head. There's no question that he did it. But in the scale of was it an advantage gained or a disadvantage gained, no, neither occurred. Was there any pain? Nope, that's why their parents bought them helmets. <laughs> or maybe their mom didn't buy them a helmet, they got it from a team, but that's why mom put them in a helmet, was just to make sure that that didn't bother them. But big boys get a man advantage with two minutes remaining in regulation. We need to say that because we are knotted at three. Chuck Jaffe with Ryan Conwell. And that is not how you wanna honor your possession time on a man up. One-on-one -on -one low angle, but we get a push on Trevor Smith. Broken stick, so they have to reset. James Cathers comes out. Fresh 30-second shot clock as Weeks got a piece of the ball. Shatler in front, in the crease, and too low an angle for Desi Oaks on that one. That was a major save. They really needed that one. Oaks had two attempts there where he went across the crease and his angle was too shallow. Where he scored the goal, he took a great angle to get in front of the crease and go across the face of the goal. The two that he's missed and then the one that he just stayed wide, those have been bad plays. Got to get to the front of the net. Has to play like he played the first one. Not like, hey, I scored, so now I can do anything and it'll go in. So we're in the last minute of regulation. That one shot wide, I'm not sure that the goalie saw it. We have an over and back. So 30 seconds on the shocker, we're into stop time. 50 seconds in the period, 30 seconds on the shot clock as we started this possession. Blake Kenny with the ball. We have a delay of game penalty called on. Oh, this is a big deal right here, Chuck. Because they put a six guy on offense. When you have when you have a delay of game penalty in the last two minutes, it results in a penalty shot. So what's really terrible, that was an offensive delay of game. That penalty occurred while they were going out with their man up and they had too many men when it was time to put the ball in play. They had six on the floor. So not only did they lose possession, but because it's a delay of game, a time serving penalty, but a delay of game in the last minute is I'm sure the rule here, we get a penalty shot. Killen with it and he scores. So with 41.1 seconds remaining, and it's amazing to see a game like this could possibly come down to just a penalty shot because of too many men on the floor. What an incredible call late in the game. And again, too many men on offense. On offense. <laughs> so, you know, one of the interesting things that occurred there is that you wound up, because we had gone to stop time, you wound up with a ref who was basically putting them in play, and I think the big boys thought they had a little more time to be able to make their substitution. Loose ball picked up, and eventually gets over to Gillies. Gillies can kill most of this clock. And a timeout is called as the big boys come away with the ball. Mike Lazor. 
So what do you do here, Chuck? Are you pulling your goalie? Of course. Unless you tell me that there is a that there is some sort of uh, differential that will determine things down the line based on how many goals you give up. But I think I'm still pulling my goal. Because the shot yep. clock is no longer a question. You have 23.5 seconds remaining in regulation. And you have the ability to give the ball to Jeff Shatler to bring, the, bring it up the floor. You know, it'll be really interesting to see how fast they actually take that first shot, too. Because I don't think they're going to want to sweat it out and go too late in the clock, even with an empty net, because right. they need the goal. They're not worried. About, losing by two is much less of a deal than getting quality shots. But it's the important thing is getting the quality shots. Gillies is out marking Shatler, and that ball hits off the stick and goes into the bench, gives it back to Graftex. I like the aggressive defense from Graftex there too, really going out and pressuring the ball and not just letting his shots develop. Well, and, and willing to let, you know, the, the big boys team is a bunch of young players, as we said, uh, it's a lot of young guys. And then as a little pleasantries, Abe, Abe Garrow, Abe Garrow and Braden Wallace exchanging pleasantries at the end of the game saying, where are you going for chicken wings? and what have you, but I, I think the other side of that defense was that what we know about the big boys is, while well, they're called the big boys, they're actually young guns. Yes. And then they have Jeff Shatler. And what you just saw was, hey, let's put out a six man. They go, they pull their goalie, they put out the six man, but Graftech said, we're gonna play you five on four. We're gonna let Gillies go off and freeze out Shatler. And the other five guys didn't read that and didn't really react and then a simple missed pass, which sadly for the big boys, hit the bench rather than hitting the glass, and there you go. So our final here from the Onondaga Nation Fieldhouse, it's Graftex for the big boys of Aquasasne 3. Thank you for watching. On behalf of Ryan Conwell, we'll be back in a little bit with our last game of the night. Thank you for watching the Lacrosse All-Stars North American Invitational.